Hey, Princeton and Georgetown, I'll tell you what. I'm supposed to go home for the weekend. If Princeton can beat Georgetown, I am going to hitchhike to Providence, which isn't that far from here. I'm going to be their ball boy on their next game, and then I'm going to change into a Princeton cheerleading uniform. I'm going to lead all the cheers. Let's go, Tigers! Let's go, Tigers! That should I'll be enough never to happen. motivate the team. But if they're going to win, they're going to have to do some of it from three-point range. Thanks very much, John Saunders, and welcome, everyone, to Providence, Rhode Island. The entire country now with a reason to root for Princeton. So we can see Dick Vitale here in a cheerleader's uniform come Sunday. But a uh, David and Goliath matchup, if there ever was one here tonight. Mike Gorman along with Ron Perry. There is the Princeton Tiger, who will hopefully engineer the miracle of miracles tonight. And Pete Carrill, one of the most respected coaches in the profession on the Princeton bench, has a great reputation of making other teams do what he wants to do as opposed to vice versa. But he is up against John Thompson and the Georgetown Hoyas. Arguably right now, forget about polls. Hard to imagine anyone playing better in the country, Ron, than this club right now. They're on a tremendous roll, and Princeton's got to handle that pressure. Let's meet the starting lineups. Here's Ray Baker. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Providence Civic Center, an NCAA first round basketball championship game. First game this evening, the Hoyas of Georgetown University take on the Tigers of Princeton University. Here are your starting lineups. Starting at forward for Princeton, a 6'8 freshman from Baltimore, Maryland, number 55, Matt Eastwick. At forward for Georgetown. A 6'7 sophomore from Glen Arden, Maryland, number 52, John Turner. And forward for Princeton, a 6'3 senior from Avon by the Sea, New Jersey, number 34, Bob Scraven. And forward for Georgetown, 6'4 senior from New Orleans, Louisiana, number 21, Jaron Jackson. Princeton, a 6'7 sophomore from Downers Grove, Illinois, double O, Kit Miller. At center, Georgetown, a 6'10 freshman from Chesapeake, Virginia, number 33, Alonzo Morning. And God for Princeton, 6'3 sophomore from Woodcliffe Lake, New Jersey, number five. Just about set to go. John Thompson, Pete Carrill have met at half court and will return with the opening tip off right after these messages. Well, Kit Mueller at 6'7 will jump it up against Alonzo Morning. How about that? Not too many people lead the series against Georgetown, but Princeton does, 5-4. to four. Well, Princeton has a rich tradition of basketball history. They've got to get off to a good start in this one, though, and take good care of the ball. Tap is controlled by the Hoyas. Smith has got it. Inside pass bounces to John Turner. It's like a packed-in 1-2-2 zone by Princeton. They'll try to match with shooters. Walks out inside. here after that initial pass inside by Smith and a traveling violation on Dwayne Bryant. Good packed in, aggressive zone, pressure on the top. It's really a three-guard lineup that Pete Carrill goes with. Bob Scrabus is called a forward, but he's really about 6'2". Left which now will bring it up against Smith as the Hoyas extend the pressure. Left which, freshman guard. Mueller comes high, and Morning won't come after him. 
but we'll look for Princeton to use a lot of time off the shot clock each time down the floor. I would like to use about 30 to 35 seconds if they can. Mueller again, and Morning a good five feet away. Scravis' shot is blocked by Turner and picked off by Morning. Here comes Smith. The trailer is Morning. Puts it on the floor. He's stripped nicely. Leftwich got a hand in that. Good call. Leftwich did get his hand in it. Offensively, Pete Carrill bringing Kit Mueller out, forcing Alonzo Morning away from the goal. Georgetown in the man defense. Eastwick now will take a top of the key. Turner a little more aggressive on him. Carrell has always liked the back door cut. We're seeing Princeton play as flash already. Here's Mueller first time. Takes it in. And hits the hook shot. Nice job by Kit Mueller. Led the Ivy League with a 70% field goal shooting. Those kind of shots. This were the old days now. If Princeton got the ball back, they may keep it for five or six minutes. That's right. right. Can't with the 45-second shot clock, though. Morning has it stripped away, but it'll still be Georgetown ball. Here's a look at Pete Carrill, 20 plus years on the Princeton bench. Kit Mueller is going to be called with the foul, jumping in his first, first on Princeton. Clearly, Kit Mueller, Bob Scravis, Pete Carrill's top players must avoid fouls in this ballgame. I see a lot of smiles over on the Princeton bench, so truly they have come to enjoy this experience, no matter what it turns out to be. Smith outside, this is a three out of bounds, Princeton ball. Well, one thing Princeton should be doing against John Thompson's club is playing free and easy. I mean, not a lot is expected of him in this game, so they'll go out there and play loosely. The pressure's really on Georgetown. Eastwick again looks inside for Mueller. Just a spread offense, three guards. Doyle cuts off Mueller's high post. Now Kit brings it outside. This is a good strategy because Morning doesn't really want to venture out much higher than the foul line. So Mueller can really stand out there unattended until the clock works itself down. 15 right now on the shot clock. There it is. Back to a cut and a beauty. And that's a goal 10. Give the bucket to Scravis. That's the backdoor cut. Work the shot clock down. And that's been a Pete Carrill trademark over the years. 4-0 Princeton. And clearly Princeton needed to get off to that kind of start. Get a couple of hoops. Build the confidence level. They'll just pack the zone at the other end. Doyle aggressively out on Turner there at the top of the zone. Inside, John Turner powers up two. That's where Georgetown should be looking to get it. Morning and Turner, Turner clearly with the size advantage inside. Mueller trying to get away, and a foul called on John Turner. Too aggressive on the defense. First on the Hoyas. John Thompson calling the press off the bench. Really the biggest challenge for Princeton this one is to try to deal with this. John Thompson's teams have been so successful in the NCAA tournament. But this pressure has given people problems all year long. Georgetown leading the nation in field goal percentage defense, holding the opposition around 39% all year. Scravis, good little fake down in the corner. Now he penetrates, and again a goal tent. Give Scravis some credit. He's getting it right to the bucket. Morning can't believe it, but that ball was clearly on its way down with a chance to go. Scravis, oh yeah, he takes that one out of the cylinder. Good call. Morning way up there, though. 6 nothing, Princeton. Excuse me, 6-2. I don't want to shortchange the Hoyas here. <laughs> Turner with the power moving. Morning down low and easy, too. Stay with their game plan, though, on this one. They'll continue to just be patient with the basketball. And it's frustrating to play D each time down the court for about 35, 40 seconds. Smith now came out on Mueller when he was top of the key. It's like a 1-3-1 one, one zone now the Hoyas have gone to out of the man set. Really a better set because it leaves you less vulnerable in the back door cuts. Scravis barks out the signals. 20 seconds now on the shot clock as Princeton has effectively held the ball for at least 30 seconds in each of their possessions. Shot clock at eight. Mueller picks it back out. Shot clock at three. Nice drive. Nice bucket. Jerry Doyle. Some 
kind of scoop shot with about three to go on the shot clock. Stolen down low, left switch again with the quick hand. Done a nice job a couple of times. They're lulling Georgetown to sleep a little bit. And what happens is you play deep for so long, you want to rush it when you get it to the offensive end. Third time, the Hoyas have turned it over here in the first four and a half minutes. Yeah, that's right. If there was no shot clock, Princeton would be holding this thing for a few minutes right here. This is going to be a very quick basketball game as it is if they're going to take 30 seconds off each possession. They've played some teams this year in the 40s and 50s, averaging just over 50 a game scoring. Beat South Carolina, who played here this afternoon, losing to NC State. Mueller. Doyle. Going clear. Is Bryant the quick push the other way? Right side, Smith squares up. No. Mueller the rebound. See, again, Georgetown gets down, and now you get the ball, and immediately you want to put it up and try to score it. It's a little frustrating because Princeton will come right back at you and be patient. Just a freshman now, Leftwich, a lot of pressure to handle the ball in this game. And Jerry Doyle, just a sophomore. Six sophomores and six freshmen on this Princeton team. Scrape is the only senior. Eastwood with 10 seconds on the shot clock. Here's Doyle again, penetrates, leaves it for Mueller, and Morning sends the hook shot out of bounds. But Princeton will get the ball and a fresh 45, up by four. See, that's why Alonzo's shaking his head. He batted it out of bounds, would have rather kept it in play. There's a timeout on the floor with the score. Yes, it is. Princeton eight, Georgetown four. Under three minutes to go in the game. Princeton by two in the ball. Up to Doyle. Blocked by Morning. Here comes Winston. That's where Pete Carrill wants to back the ball out with just under three minutes to go. Mark Tillman, the runner, goes down with tie to 47. Princeton has two timeouts remaining. They call two early. Georgetown with one, and the possession arrow favors Princeton. So if Princeton gets in a jam, now's the time to use up the timeout. Man-to-man -man pressure by the Hoyas. Pulls it back out. Mueller. Stravis goes on the back door cut. Morning off of now saying, hey, time to just get back into the paint area. And burned it up in the layups. That's right. Mueller kicks it out. Eight on the shot clock. Back to Mueller. Cut to Doyle. Oh, got it. Great dish off by Mueller. Doyle with the big finish off another back door. Smith. Top of the key to Winston. Under two to go now. Inside morning and Mueller the foul before the shot. Kit Mueller, along with his nine points and bloody lip, also has eight assists on the night. What a gutty effort by the big guy. Big in a relative sense. He's about 6'7". Another beautiful feed. Doyle with a nice roll. Watch the Princeton bench. They're not into it too much right now. On their feet. Alonzo Morning back at the free throw line. His club down two. Drilled two moments ago. Pressure free throws by the freshman. 19 for Morning. Three of three on the night. I had a feeling last one with the ball wins, right? Going that way. Hoya bench. That's a big look of concern as this thing winds down. Princeton by one. Morning responds to the challenge. 49 apiece. Now look for a good 35 seconds here by the Tigers. The fifth time this game has been tied here in the second half. Scravis and Mueller should be handling a lot late here. High. Mueller, excellent at always releasing himself to the ball. Skip pass, picked off. 
Morning's got it. One minute, two seconds to go. Hoya ball in a tie game. Princeton will still get another possession. About a 20-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Uh, Georgetown's going to pull it out. Charles Smith time. And they'll try to set up Morning if they can. Mueller doing everything he can down there to front Alonzo Morning. Mark Tillman catches and fires. Rebound Morning lost it. Tillman got it. Won't go down. Kept alive three times, four times. Morning. Foul from behind by Stravis. And Alonzo will return to the free throw line. I think he got him on the floor. Morning with the height advantage. He was all over that offensive rebound, tipping it several times before he could gain possession. Tillman can't get it to go. And Morning hands all over the place. Scravis kicks that one free. Morning again with the rebound after several tips. And Scravis hacking right there. Got it on the fourth tip to himself. One-on-one, it was on the floor. Yep, good call, Ron, so Morning needs to make the first. And with 23 seconds left, depending on what happens here, stage is set for Princeton to hold for the last one. And take a three. And go for the win, depending on what Morning can do from the line. Oh, he's been tough. He's been huge at the line. Five in a row, down the stretch, with not a lot of people cheering for him. Blocking that out, and his concentration efforts are great down the end. Biggest free throws of his young life. <laughs> Missed it. Rebound, Scravis. Princeton the ball, down one. Here they come. They may use a timeout here. They've got two left, and they do. What a ball game. That NCAA tournament back was just up there may not be valid about a minute from now 15 seconds to go georgetown by one 50 to 49 princeton the ball and a chance to win georgetown can't carelessly foul next foul by georgetown sends princeton into the one-on-one bonus situation the possession arrow favors princeton so if there's a tie-up it stays their way Key thing right now for Princeton is number one, just to get the ball in bounds. I look for Georgetown to put pressure on the basketball, getting it in. And then the key thing I think is to get the ball somehow in the foul line area to Mueller, work the cuts, and try to get the ball to Scravis if possible. A look at John Thompson, who's over there to set his defense now with his club. And the sellout crowd here at Providence, Rhode Island, has been treated to a game that will be talked about for a long time. That's for sure. I mean, the expectation level, clearly, no one, I don't think, was predicting this beforehand. And Princeton has just gone out and controlled tempo, kept this score, and put themselves in that position we talked about early where they could have a chance to win. And that's exactly what they've got right now by running their game plan and backdoor cuts in this one. And no matter what the results here in the next 15 seconds or so, the Ivy League walks out of this building tonight with their heads held very high. No question about it. Princeton, the last Ivy League team to win a game in the NCAAs. And they get a standing ovation from this crowd as they come back on the floor. Key thing for Princeton now, John Thompson will have his defense set up here, stressing no fouls, stressing boxing out and rebounding. Princeton's got to take good care of the basketball and be aggressive with it. All right, here we go. 15 seconds. Georgetown by one, 50 to 49. Lappin, Leftwich, Doyle, Scravis, and Mueller. Georgetown man to man. They give it to Scravis. Bobby Winston on him. He gets a screen from Mueller. Comes up, fire blocked by Morning. Loose on the floor, Jefferson can't on the save floor. it out of bounds. On the floor with a second One to go. second on the clock, and Princeton's got a final prayer. Oh, Morning has come up huge at the end of this ball game from the foul line, and with that defensive play, it's enough time for Princeton, though, to get it in and get a shot off. The sixth block. 
going to try to get it to Scrabus. Lappin. Mueller fires. No. The Hoyas escape. And I mean escape. And advance to the second round in the Eastern Regional. Princeton Tigers putting on just a fantastic show here tonight. They were a 20-point-plus underdog coming in here, but Pete Carrill's club just played their hearts out. They believed they could do it. They came out, got the early lead, and just executed this whole ball game. Controlled the pace. And Princeton's got to be proud of their efforts towards town. Had themselves some scare. Princeton may have lost this game on the scoreboard, but that's the only place they lost it. 50 to 49, the final score. Let's go back to John Saunders. It's over here, John. John, I can't believe it. Can't believe it. Even it's with incredible. the Georgetown Hoyas winning by one, it has to be oh. one of the most incredible oh, basketball geez. games ever played in the history of the NCAA oh. tournament. A number one seed had oh. never lost to a number 16 seed, and the Princeton Tigers nearly pulled it off. Dick Vitale. I can't believe you got the P on backwards. Let's give that. But you don't have to wear the cheerleading outfit. Oh. What a game. Hey, I couldn't go to Providence, but I would have had to go. I can't believe this. That would have been the greatest upset in the history of the NCAA tournament. I mean, you talk about being out personnel. Pete Carell has to go down as one of the great, great coaches. And what a great effort. And we were dying here. And all the people out here are dying. That's Lauren Matthews, Jim Marchione, <laughs> the NCAA. Nobody can believe it. I, did they win or lose? I think they Do won I by one. Like the I'm not really sure. I, don't, oh I know you don't have to go to Providence, God. but we're going to go out there through the Can't magic of television right now.